Hello trainers and welcome to another episode of Sakuram Versus. That's right, this series is back too. I'm telling you, I'm coming out full force. And today I have another Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire Wi-Fi battle for you. And uh, today's match is an OU match, as normal usually, but this is a little bit different. Um, it only looks like it can kind of be OU, and that is because... Uh, this is the first match of the GBA, which is what I talked about before, which is the Global Battle Association, if I remember correctly. <laughs> um, but this is a match between me and RC. I'm the owner of the Indian Indianapolis Keldeos. As you can see, I'm rocking the uh, mascot there. And uh, this is against RC, who is the owner of the Denver Rapidash. Um, as you can see, he's probably not packing the Rapidash for good reasons. I had quite a bit of water Pokemon on my team, or on the selected draft that I had, so... He kind of need to pick what he need to pick. And I actually predicted these Pokemon before. We are, the, the whole rules with this thing is a little bit different. We drafted nine Pokemon. Um, aside from the mascot Pokemon that we had. One of them is a Mega. As you can see, I have Megalopony. He has Metagross. That is his Mega Metagross. And um, there's no spoilers there. Not, not for any reason for anyone who's a part of this anyway. Um, and just to explain it really quick... Uh, we've each drafted nine Pokemon, and we have to stick with those Pokemon. The only deal is that we can change our teams up. Like, we can change the sets. For instance, like, I made this team specifically for the Pokemon that I predicted would be in this battle that he would send against me, and lo and behold, I think I, cor like, correctly predicted, like, all of these Pokemon. The only one I think I really wasn't sure if he was going to bring was the Rose Raid or the, uh, the Chandelure. Um, I figured that he'd probably bring his Mandibuzz for a Defogger because he saw that a Klefki. I figured that he'd have all this stuff. But let's just get into the battle right here because, you know, there's no use in just talking about a battle. As you can see, we've got our awesome lead-ups right here when I lead off with my Flygon, predicting that the Elz Azelf was going to be his sacrificial lead with Stealth Rocks and Explosion. As he does decide to go for the Taunt, he does outspeed me because I am a Choice Banded Flygon. Um, cause I figured that this Flygon was gonna be all about power, not about trying to outspeed anything. So I go for the U-turn and bring him down to his Focus Sash. As I do land a critical hit, I'm not quite sure if that mattered, but I am Max Attack. I am Choice Banded, so, and I don't believe Azup has super high defenses. Um, and I go straight into my Don Fan, and as he's at the, at his Focus Sash with 1 HP, I do decide to go for the Ice Shard and knock out the Azelf. First two turns, already one Pokemon down. It's a bit of a misplay trying to uh, let it go down, but he couldn't really help a critical hit going through. As he does decide to send in Amanda, the Amanda Buzz, and I just go straight for the knockoff because I want to try and reduce the amount of recovery that he is going to be getting. Uh, the less HP he gets, the better. So I do go for the knockoff and then go for the Ice Shard combo because it's super effective. And I know it's not going to deal too much damage because he is physically defensive. I believe it's probably a bold nature um, Pokemon and I keep knocking my desk. But he does end up going for foul plays. It does a lot of damage because I'm adamant, not impish in this set. Um, and uh, so the foul plays are doing a decent amount of damage as I'm hitting off a good chunk of damage to where I can follow up and knock out his Mandibuzz um, with, another poke with another Pokemon. Uh, so I do decide to go into my Lopunny here and I decide to go for the Mega Evolution because I said, why not? This is probably the best chance that I'll ever have to go against it, even though it's a foul playing Pokemon. But he's not going to have the chance really to take it anyway because I go for the Fake Out right here just to make sure that he takes as much damage as possible. I could have just went straight for the Ice Punch, but I think it risked him surviving more. Because even seeing how low his HP went down, I thought he would still live with 1 HP. And, uh... I didn't want that. That was at least the worst possible case. That's the worst case scenario that could have happened. As he does decide to send in his Chandelure, I'm guessing, assuming that he was safe uh, from the uh, from the normal type moves, but and from Fighting type. But I I guess he forgot Megalopony has Scrappy as its ability, so I am able to two hit KO with returns. And Lopony has taken a lot of damage from the low from the uh, the Psychic, but. I wasn't too worried about it. I'm surprised he just didn't go for Will-O-Wisp, though, and half my attack. He probably would have survived um, and been able to knock me out. But uh, he does Mega Evolve as he sends in his me uh, his his Metagross, not Gyarados, his Metagross here, and does take Megalopony out with a Bullet Punch. So that's all right. Megalopony's down, but you know what? We're still a good chunk ahead with three of his pokes being down, and I have only lost two. As I do decide to bring in my Clefki, who is 
perfectly made for this Metagross. I made it specifically to fight off uh, Metagross. As you'll see right here, I go for the Magnet Rise thinking that he might try to Earthquake me, but I'm guessing he saw that coming, so he decided to switch out immediately. As I saw that he probably did not want Klefki to be any harm to his Metagross, because that was the only thing on my team really I could really do damage to it well. Um, I decided to switch out and he was probably going to put me to sleep as he does go for the sleep powder and Keldeo was the most expendable Pokemon on my team uh, for this battle so I did decide to put him out and let him go to sleep and take the KOs. Um, he did start setting up toxic spikes which I did forget that he does that Rose Ray does learn toxic spikes but I didn't think it was going to be too much of an issue especially because I have um, one steel type and I have a levitating Pokemon uh, left on top of the I believe my Dawn fan is knocked out. Yeah. So all my Pokemon that are left are pretty much in good condition to deal with us uh, with toxic spikes. But he only put on he only put down one layer, which is a little bit of a I thought it was a bit of a misplay. He probably should have set up two layers, but I guess it doesn't really end up mattering too much in the end because there's only one Pokemon on my team that does uh, not get hurt by toxic spikes or does get hurt by toxic spikes, and that is uh, my Mr. Mime. Um, as he is able to knock me out with, I believe that was two Giga Drains. I do landed the skull, do land the scald, not landed. I landed the scald and burned it, which was great because uh, the more damage that I get on it and reduce its recovery, the better my situation is going to be. As I do decide to send in Flygon right here, and I figured I would outspeed a Rose Raid. I should have looked into it, but I just went with my gut feeling. And I decided to go for Outrage because it was my best possible play. I'm assuming he thought I was going to go for Earthquake as he goes into his Rotom to try and take the Choice Banded Earthquake. But little did I know that two choice that a Choice Banded Outrage would do more than half HP to Rotom Wash. That's incredible to me because usually Rotom Wash is physically defensive and impossible for me to take down. So I would made Mr. Mime specifically for Rotom Wash to trick the leftovers off of it and to give it a Toxic Orb to make its health go down faster. As he, I do luck out and get the triple outrage, the three turn outrage, and I'm able to knock out two of RC's Pokemon with my Flygon, and at this point I was pretty much set in the battle. Um, now this is one play that I would probably make a little bit differently if I had to redo this battle again, and that would be to pull Flygon out here because I could have used him to knock out Mega Metagross. An Earthquake, I think, would have knocked him out, but I did decide to stay in and go for Outrage again just because I had Klefki in the back, and I figured that he couldn't touch me regardless. Um, but I, that ends up not being the case um, at some point, as you'll see. Uh, he does go for the Bullet Punch and knock out Flygon, and he gets a critical hit, which did not matter because I was at low HP. Bullet Punch, Stab, Tough Claws Boost, Max Attack, Adamant, it, or Jolly. Oh, I wasn't going. I wasn't going to live. There was no way that Flygon was going to stay up. As I do decide to switch out into Klefki, and I pulled off the riskiest of plays and went for the Magnet Rise, thinking that he would go for Earthquake, but he had already seen that I had Magnet Rise, so it was no sense of him doing it. As he does go for the Meteor Mash, gets the attack boost, I do avoid the second Meteor Mash here, which was where this battle ended up being... It turned the tide. That was the only bit of hacks on my side that mattered. Without that, uh, so good game, uh... Good, good game, RC. It was great. The only reason why I won that was because Klefki was able to dodge the second Meteor Mash. If I hadn't dodged the second Meteor Mash, that would have been good game because the only Pokemon I had left at that point was Mr. Mime. And Mr. Mime was specially defensive, it was slow, and the only move that it would do any damage to it, to that Metagross, was, um, was Shadow Ball. So, that's all I had left for that, so... I probably, if I, again, if I had to play it differently, if I chose and thought about it through, instead of being, like, arrogant and wanting to use Klefki to take out Metagross because it would be funny and it would be great, and that's what I built it for, I probably should have did the safer play and pulled back, um, Flygon, brought out Mr. Mime to sack, switch into Klefki maybe, and set up a Reflect so he wouldn't be able to do as much damage, possibly hit him with a foul play and then have Earthquake with Flygon to have safely sealed my victory. Um, but otherwise, other than that, great game, RC. It was really great. We both had some misplays here. There was a bit of hacks on my side and that's not much I can, there's not much I can do about that. Um, that's just the way the game works and you know that. 
Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to leave a like and to subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Um, also, don't forget to check out the socials. I have a Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and a Twitch account, which you can follow me at. And I will be streaming on Saturday. I believe it is Friday today, right? So tomorrow? Yes, tomorrow. Tomorrow I will be streaming. I'm recording this a couple days in advance, so it's kind of like hard for me to know what day is uh, videos are going up. So, because I'm pretty good on I'm on schedule right now. So, before I keep rambling and hold you any longer, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. My name has been Professor Sakurum, Professor Sakurum, <laughs> and I will see you guys in night. Way to screw up your own intro. See you guys next time. Bye.